tape sick eye. Evening, I hope you're doing well. I apologise for the lighting, but the alternative is I put the halogen bulb in that and that's a bit fierce this time of the year. So we're going to talk about the, uh, the brake check valve and what we can do to diagnose and fix it in the car. So firstly, what does it do? So the brake check valve sits here in your system and what it does is it takes manifold vacuum into the engine and it uses it to assist the brakes through the brake servo down here. So this is your master cylinder which will generate a signal that uses that vacuum to assist your brakes which is very important for a car that weighs nearly two tons. There is a fail safe there so uh, you know if this this whole system is leaking like a sieve then you'll still be able to pull the car up. Um, I wonder how many people have, uh, have no idea how badly it is leaking. So we're going to talk about um, what does it do, how to diagnose it, how to fix it. So where is it? In the car, it's right here in a 420. So this would normally be poked a little bit further through the fender here, but I've pulled it out because I've actually been replacing these pipes as time goes on. But this is where you'll find it. There is also another check valve for the heating equipment, which is right up the back in there. Um, but that is a completely separate system that I have since blocked off. So we won't talk about that one. Why is it a problem? So these were built by a company called Trico. Um, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to bag the company out, but um, I think they're long since out of business though. Uh, they are a strange design and they're one of the few parts in classic Jaguars that are known to be A, not very good and B, not serviceable. So... Normally, I mean, check these aren't check valves like you and I would know them in other cars. Basically, this is what goes down to the manifold. And they've seen it, seen it prudent to actually add the... So you need a manifold here. These would normally be joined up and then you'd have one entry into the check valve. But instead, they've used these two here. So these are common. This one goes down to the Reservac underneath the... Well, that's what Jaguar would call it. It's underneath the fender here. That's the vacuum reservoir here. And then... This one back here goes down to the brake servo down there. So, how do we, well, how do we fix it? How do we diagnose it, first of all? So, we spoke about this in the last video. I've got the, uh, it's, it's basically a vacuum pump. It's used to uh, vacuum brakes, or to actually bleed your brakes, I should say. I've used it for so much more than that. There is another way that you can actually check this. If you're familiar with how your brakes feel, then what you can do, and it's not too bad, I mean, you know, providing there is some vacuum power there, what you can do is go park yourself up, um, put your foot on the brake, and turn the engine off. And you'll feel in a couple of seconds how quickly it takes for your, you to lose that vacuum power. And depending on how long that takes might be an indication to if the system is leaking and how badly is it leaking. So what I'll do now is I'll set that little system up um, in place of the engine. So we're gonna we're gonna generate a vacuum and see what happens. So I'll be back soon So we're hooked up with the vacuum pump in place of where the manifold connection would be see if we can show that So this has been a really interesting process. I've watched this thing deteriorate in the last six months quite rapidly Now this car wasn't used very much at all um, in maybe the previous 20 or 30 years and it's come into my you know um, to my ownership and I daily drive this thing now and it's getting to the point where I can I can really feel that this this isn't working um, as I've gone through and solved all of the other vacuum leaks this is the one that's remained and it was really interesting I was, I was working on a friend's car a couple of weeks ago um, this thing would previously hold a vacuum it would hold not a very strong vacuum at all if I can pump this all day long you can see that it's holding something, but it quickly comes back to zero. Now, this, it wasn't always like this. It would hold, you know, maybe 10, uh, 10 inches of mercury at one stage, but it would go no higher. And I had it in my head that maybe there was some kind of vacuum relief valve in this system. I can hear you all in the bleachers screaming out, Rob, there is no vacuum relief thing in this system. I'm not a smart man, I didn't see that. So I, I thought that, um, you know, this was, this was what it was supposed to be doing. 
and it was working on um, on a mate's car that made me realise that no, it's not supposed to be like that at all. And now, I mean, coming back to this now, it's it's completely fucked. And I can tell you that the little diaphragm in here, so there you've got these two little plates that are crimped together, and there's a diaphragm in this that's completely gone now. So if you hook this vacuum system up to your car, you apply a vacuum, you should be pulling vacuum here. What should happen is it should va evacuate the entire system and that brake check valve should prevent it from emptying. So we can see that that is not happening at all. There's something there. It will hold something as a leak. That's quickly coming back down. So another thing to note here, and I've done this in previous videos, is use this pump to actually check the condition of your lines. If you find that you've got a leak, that you that you are leaking badly enough here, well, don't just stop at the brake check valve. We're focusing on this now because I know that this is the problem. But if you put your vacuum pump on this line or maybe this line, and you, find, you can really work through your system slowly and find exactly where your leak is. This is a fantastic tool to help you in this, in this chase for, for leaks. So with those tests we just ran, it's important to note that a leak found at the engine manifold connection may also indicate leaks anywhere further downstream of this brake check valve. So to confirm that it is this, we do just need to do an additional investigation here where we hook this up like that, lock off these two ports here which would go to the reservac and the rest of the brake system and just apply a vacuum and see what happens. Now, see straight away that comes back down. So what we'd expect to see there is it just reaches a point and holds it. But it's not doing that. And I can tell you that it's leaking through this, this join here. And um, I've read online that, look, you can try and open this up and fix it. You just won't get anywhere. So call it a day for this one and move on. So one of the reasons that a leak through the brake system affects our cars so badly is not, not only that it's introducing unmetered air into the engine, but that it's introducing unmetered air through one side of the engine which affects the tuning of one carburetor uh, more so than the other. So right now if I were to go and start my car with both of these jet heights set the same, the rear carburetor would function exactly as we would expect it to uh, in the piston lift test, but the front won't. It will stall out straight away. And that's because it's getting extra air through the brake uh, manifold takeoff. Uh, one, another thing to keep your eye on is spark plug color. So over the last few months, I've noticed that the front th three plugs uh, show signs of being consistently more lean than the rear three. So yeah, certainly something to keep on in mind as we go ahead. What we're gonna do, um, now look, you can still buy these uh, brand new for 130 Australian dollars. Um, not only am I not a rich man, I refuse to pay $130 for something that's, you know, fundamentally fucked. I, I really don't want to put this, you know, a new one of these in there only for it to die six months later. So I, I'm going to show you something that I know is going to work and it's, it's criminal to think how much it cost. Um, $10 for two of these posted to my house. This is a standard brake check valve. Uh, it's universal with 10 mil fitting, so it's going to fit right in there. Um, and and this, is, this is what you've, some variation of this with an in, in one input and one output is what you'll find in 99% of cars on the road today. And there's just no reason to be so complex. Um, what I'm going to do is put this in line as close, well, I mean, on the line to the manifold, and then I'm going to simulate this manifold here with these plastic pump plumbing parts. <laughs> now I'm right into hydroponics, so I've got um, I've got these on tap. Basically, we're going to use this one to pass through the fender, and then we're going to use this one to uh, to break those lines in two. So we're going to we're going to basically join it like that, and then like that. And the sum total of this will be about twelve dollars. And I promise you that uh, it's going to last a lot longer than whatever unit we would have replaced it with um, from the OEM manufacturer. I've even got a spare one of these, how'd you be? Um, so what I'll do is I'll, I'll basically put this together, then we'll try the vacuum test again, and I'll show you what it should look like. So I'll see you guys soon. So I must also mention that all of this you know, diagnosis still applies if you want to just replace with a new one of these. Maybe you'll choose to do that. If you want to pay 130 bucks for that, you go right ahead. But for the tight asses out there, this is what we've got. So, we've got that elbow connection going through the fender there. 
I've got that T-piece here. I've got that brake uh, check valve here. So this is what will connect to the manifold. Now, put it in there. I haven't even got hose clamps in that yet. That's been sitting like that for a while. So, yeah, remember that our manifold vacuum tends to be between, what is it, 15 and, no, 13 and 15 bar. I've got another, I've just forgotten there. But you can see that that's a massive improvement. We're holding vacuum in the brake system. You'll sit here pumping this for a while before you achieve that because it is quite a large system. But that's leaps and bounds ahead of where it was. So, really happy with that. Um, I'm going to go inside and watch telly, but yeah, keep that in mind. Hopefully that's been some help to you. See you next time.